Hello, it's Marco here. Hope everyone is uh, fine. Besides creating very detailed tutorial, I would also like to start creating uh, shorter ones uh, covering specific aspects, typically questions that I get through Discord or through my YouTube channel. So in this one, we want to add a negative camber to a cow's vehicle to make it look cooler. And if it's a drifting car, that's what uh, they have. So. Let's start by creating a new project in Unreal Engine 5 uh, based on the advanced vehicle template and click create. The name doesn't matter, will be project third in my case. Let's wait for it to open. Go to the content drawer, vehicle template, blueprints sports car and let's open the sport car blueprint but we're not going to act on it and actually the modifications we have to make are inside the animation blueprint but it's easier to get it from here so let's click on the skeletal mesh and then here on the details panel double click on the car skeletal mesh okay here we go so once we are here we switch through this button to uh, the animation blueprint and as you can see, we have a few nodes. So this is the wheel controller is the node that is animating the wheels and making sure that when we are steering from wheels are steering and also the wheel, uh, wheels are rotate, uh, rotating. And then the control rig is used to make sure that the axles are animated properly. Okay. But in this case, we're not going to touch it. So let's close it and then go back to the animation blueprint. What we are going to do is add uh, one specific node. So right click and search for modify, transform modify bone. So this is the node that we want to use and we need it four times. And we are going to connect it immediately after the control rig. So let's drag this to the right side to make a bit of room. And actually, before we duplicate this one four times, let's configure it the way that we need it. So first of all, the bone needs the, the node needs a bone to modify, and we are going to use the fees uh, wheel FL, BL, FR, and BR. So starting with the FL, and then we're going to act on the translation and on the rotation. So we have to make sure that uh, the pins are showing, and actually they are. We don't need the scale pin, so we can uncheck expose a spin and it will disappear. We also don't need the alpha, but I like to leave it anyway. And then translation mode, we're going to use add to existing. And for the translation space, we are going to use parent bone space. The same for the rotation. So rotation mode, we will say add to existing and rotation space, it will be the parent bone space. Okay, once we are done with this, we can start to connect the control rig to the uh, node we just added. And you will see that Unreal automatically added this local to component node, which is fine. Um, then we click on the node, right click and duplicate. So one time, second time, third time so we have four copies of it and now let's make sure that they all act on different bones so wheel fl is the first one uh, the second one we need to change to wheel bl the third one needs to be wheel fr and the fourth one will be on wheel br okay so these two bones are acting on the, these two nodes are acting on the left side and these two are acting on the right side. And then we connect them and cascade them like this. And as we connect the last one, Aria will also add the component to local, okay. Need more room, perfect. Now we can compile and it should compile with the, you know, no errors and maybe I think graphically it's nicer to have it a bit like this maybe okay it's good 
Now what we need to do is um, see which of these uh, um, inputs are controlling what. And I can already tell you that uh, if we uh, switch to the skeleton or to the skeletal mesh of the car and have a look at these bones, you will see that the, for example, let's take, uh, maybe easier to see is the fifth wheel FR from the right. Uh, basically, the wheel is rotating around the y-axis, which is the green one. And uh, um, the camber, which we want to be negative in this case, let's say that we're making a drifting car, it's rotating around the x. Okay. Also, if we want to shift the wheels in and out, we have to add around the y-axis, the green one. So with that known, we go back to the animation blueprint and then we say, okay, so the translation of the wheels, we want to move the wheels uh, toward the outside. On the left side, it's going to be negative and on the right side, it's going to be positive because you have to look at the direction of the arrow. So if I want to move the wheels uh, 10 centimeters to the outside, uh, I'll type 10 here and a 10 also here, translation, and then on the other side, the left side, I will have to type a negative value. And now if we compile and we rotate the car, you see that the wheels are starting to come out. And actually what is interesting is to maybe use a variable to do that so we don't have to our code the value. So let's go under my blueprints here, uh, click the plus sign, switch to float and then F2 to rename the variable. Let's call it wheel shift. And then as we compile, we have access to the uh, value of the variable up here. Mm, careful because this one is the preview, so it's the value that we assign for previewing, but let's say that now it's a 10. And we can do the same for the camber, which I will show in a moment. So that's plus, and then we say wheel camber. And as we saw earlier, uh, the camber acts around the x axis, axis. So we'll have to be uh, this one. Now, in order to use the variables uh, within these nodes, we'll have to expand them further because we want to access, otherwise we have to uh, make vectors, but actually we can do that as well. So remember that on the left side, the values have to be negative, but uh, our wheel shift is positive by default. So we'll have to change its sign. So what we can do is drag out here and say, you know, make vector. And we connect it to both. Actually, I prefer to do it like this because then we can do two things. So we can, can connect the same vector also to the other two nodes. And let's try to make it pretty here. Okay, good enough. But for the uh, left ones, we have to change the sign of the vector. So the way to do it is so there is a function which is called negate vector and all it will be negated is uh, the 10 value that we have in and we don't have it yet and we said it's going to be in the y so let's connect it to the y and the rest is zero okay so now if we compile and then we go here under the animation preview we have the possibility to bring the wheels in and out very easily There you go. Okay. I believe we could even go negative if we want to. And then the wheels will be more recessed. Okay. 
But for a drift car, let's say that we mount them at 10 centimeters because now we're going to act on the camber. And actually to act on the camber is the same thing. I don't like that bending, so a bit more space. Um, we're going to make a rotator because this time we have to act on the rotator. But it's the exact same principle. We said that the rotator is going to act around the X axis, which is the roll axis of the wheel. So let's plug in the, the wheel camber. And now uh, we have to connect it. And since we don't know, we're going to try it out. So let's start by connecting it as it is. And I'm double clicking on any line to create the rear route pin. Okay, so that's good enough. But we know that one of these will have to be negated, inverted. So let's see how it works right now. Uh, make sure that we have a value for our wheel camber, but we can also simulate it. And you see that positive is going to be. Oh, it's actually good on this side but on the other side you see that they are inverted okay so negative camber is okay on the right side but not on the left side which means that we need to invert this rotator so the way to do it is invert rotator and the inverted rotator is what we want to connect here okay so it's not pretty but it should somehow work. Okay, actually looks terrible, but okay. And uh, let's now check if we get, so we go negative camber. Yeah, now the right and left wheels are getting the negative camber. And now if we want to go positive camber, well, they all get positive camber. Okay, so maybe values of minus 10 or minus 15 looks good. Let's say minus 15, so it's a bit more evident. And that's all we uh, need. So let's compile once more and save. And note that now we are back to the standard value. So we have to say, okay, we'll shift 10 and the camber. Well, we didn't give it a default value to that. So let's do that and save and we could also expose this variable to um, event graph if we want to or uh, to the car blueprint so that we can control the wheel shift and wheel camber directly from there okay, so that's uh, relatively easy to do let's give it a try and here we go our drift car what well, to make it drift you will have to tweak a bit the wheel parameters but when it comes to visual then we have i think a nice negative camber that you would expect from any drifting car that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one bye